This is a code walkthrough for the example file loopingwhileminimum.java. This file demonstrates using a while loop to go through a series of numbers and figure out what the smallest, or conversely the largest, number is. So as always, let's compile this file and we'll set a breakpoint on main and let's step through it and talk our way through it before we free run it a couple times with some bigger data sets. So we'll click this debug icon and as always we're setting a sentinel value of minus one and in this case we want to take a little bit of care with setting that sentinel value because we want to make sure that this value does not constitute an otherwise valid piece of data. So let's pretend we're working with test scores from 0 to 100. Minus 1 is a safe value in this case. But in other cases, we might want some other type of value. Anyway, we set the sentinel value. We declare the score and the minimum. This is the prompt that we're going to throw up each time. And notice that we've incorporated the sentinel value into it. Then we'll use that prompt and we'll pass it to the readint method of our static utilities file to read a score. And let's say the first score is a 98. So we'll bring that back. And notice that what we do is we set the running minimum value to the first score. So we're going to say that so far the minimum encountered is 98. And now we're checking that score, as always, against the sentinel value. As long as the score is not the sentinel, this looping continuation condition will be true and we'll enter the loop and we're going to check against the minimum. Is the score we're reading now less than the minimum? If it is, we'll reset the minimum to the current score. Well obviously 98 isn't less than itself so the first time through we're going to skip that and we're going to read our next score. So let's say that we read in a, a 95. So we'll come back around not equal to the sentinel, so we continue looping, and we perform the check again. And again, notice that this is nested selection logic inside a loop. Here's a realistic example of doing that. And now we're checking whether the score of 95 is less than the current minimum of 98. Well, of course, that's true. So we reset the minimum to the current score, which is 95, and proceed to read the next score. So let's say this one is a perfect score of 100. Come back around, not equal to the sentinel value. 100 is not less than the minimum, so we ignore this. The minimum score stays at 95, and we read the next value. And let's say that was a really lousy score of 28. Come back around, not equal to the sentinel, so we continue looping. The score of 28 is less than the current minimum of 95. So then we reset the minimum to 28, read the next score, and let's say we're done now. So now the score is a minus 1. Now this looping con continuation condition becomes false, so we're done looping. We pass outside to the end of the loop to the following statement, and we print out what we found to be the minimum of that set of scores, or 28. Pretty straightforward. So let's take this breakpoint off and let's give ourselves a little more, eh, we'll just free run it a couple times. So let's say, how about 98, 87, so 87 is the minimum now, 99, 98, 87 is still the minimum, 84, the new minimum, 34, the new minimum, 100, 99. So 34 should be the minimum. So let's say we're done. And as expected, 34 is the minimum. Now let me show you something that you don't want to do in this case. And that's to set the minimum equal to some hardwired value such as 0. That would be wrong because we're artificially setting the minimum to zero and all the scores we read could be well above that and we'll get incorrect results. So we'll save that, compile it, and let's run it again. So let's say we've got a 99, another 99, 98, 87, 95. So we should expect the minimum value to be 87, right? But 
because we incorrectly set this minimum value to zero, there's nothing that approaches that minimum value and we're going to report a minimum value of zero, which of course is incorrect. So the right way to do this is to set the minimum on the first pass equal to the current score. Okay, so this example then demonstrates how to find a minimum or a maximum. And by the way, how would we change this to find a maximum? Well, apart from changing the name of the class, we would change this logic. We'd reverse this. This min and this min would become max. This would become a max. And we change that to a max. But the basic thing we'd change would be we'd flip the logic here score greater than the max. Okay, so this is how a while loop can be used to find the minimum or the maximum of any arbitrary series of numbers.